Hey what up boys? Now I know I don't like to engage in guides very often, but as this channel is diving into Black Desert Online for the foreseeable future, looking at its mechanics and how it's benefited the MMO genre over the years, I thought to myself, why don't you guys come along and join me? As I have wasted over 10,000 hours in BDO. I personally consider BDO to be the best sandbox MMO currently on the market, so why not part my wisdom and, considering BDO has destroyed many years of my life, I might as well inflict that upon as many people as possible. But before we get into that, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and grab yourself a Coca-Cola, because if you enjoy fast-paced action combat, satisfying grind, and soul-crushing RNG, then BDO might just be the MMO for you. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? So, BDO, like most MMOs in today's day and age, has a 7 day free trial, so you don't need to spend a dime in order to give this game a try. As I said, despite how you feel about Korean games or action combat or disgusting underaged looking races, there is absolutely no reason not to give BDO a try as this is, to me, the best sandbox MMO currently on the market. When you start, you'll be given a choice to create what is known as a seasonal character. Go ahead and select this and jump into a seasonal server without worrying too much as I'll be explaining the purpose of seasonal characters in a moment. Next comes the most important part of your BDO career. Which class to choose that will carry you through your first 2022 BDO experience? Now, I would never assume to tell you which class you should play as I'm a firm believer in play the way you want and do not follow the meta. With the insane variety that BDO offers, I highly recommend you just look through the classes and see which waifu appeals to you the most. BDO has some of the most diverse and unique class variety across the MMO multiverse, boasting a whopping 23 classes splitting into two completely different specs for an insane 46 unique ways to play. You can of course create a trial character and test out a few max level classes, however, as a new player, this would just end up confusing you and all the classes in the game are very well designed, so pick what you want out of the roster and just roll with it. There's absolutely no drawback to re-rolling later down the line as this is a very account heavy game. Progress you make on your first character can easily be transferred over to a new one with zero drawback. After creating your character and getting into the world, I would highly recommend just following the main story. The questing interface is quite simple. You basically follow the instructions your Black Spirit Guide gives you, right clicking on quest objectives, which sets an auto marker and pressing T auto takes your character to your quest location. Very useful for a massive open world game like Black Desert Online. Your minimap is an important tool in BDO and there are four useful pieces of information displayed within it. Red dots are hostile enemies, orange dots are quest objectives, white squares are other players, and the yellow line is your currently set auto path. Get used to using the minimap as it will be very helpful later down the line. You may notice these white question marks on your travels as well, however this is a separate mechanic entirely that I'll be explaining later so for now just treat these like NPCs in the world you have not met yet. Just talk to them to clear the marks forever and do try to talk to every question mark you notice. For the first few initial levels there's no shame in simply spamming left and right click randomly to kill your enemies, so I would recommend you do just just that and rush to level 7 ASAP because it gives you the ability to sort out the mess that is this game's initial UI. First of all, as I am a boomer and cannot get used to the new age menu even after its 3 years of existence, I highly recommend you switch back to the old menu which has everything laid out nicely for you to simply click on what you need. Then go into edit UI, turn off these 3 options here, skill log, skill guide, and kill notifications. Although these are good for new players, these UI settings are basically just useless bloat, filling your screen with information that you can see with your own eyes. Provided you have more than two brain cells, these UI elements are completely useless. You'll notice very quickly that BDO does a very good job 
teaching you how to play naturally, just because of how the gameplay loop works. But whilst we're on this subject, to reduce the amount of bloat on your screen even further, I highly recommend you go into Settings, General Settings, Alerts, and uncheck all the initial shared options that are in this UI. Trade, Imperial Trading, Loot, Life Skills, etc, etc, as these are again useless for new players and only serve to bloat your screen with pointless information. Finally, this one is personal preference, and it might just be me, but I like to turn off my own name as I see this as pointless bloat as well. To do this, you want to go into Settings again, General Settings, Show slash Hide, and check whichever you prefer. I will of course be using Always Hide, so say goodbye to Pizza of Creation. Now with the mandatory garbage Korean UI elements sorted out, let's actually talk about the game itself now. Black Desert Online provides you as a new player with a very basic main quest line to follow. However, it is important to note that BDO is a very grind-based game. Do not let that put you off though. You'll see quite early on that this MMO is one that gets grinding very, very right. Your initial experience will start off like this. But by the end of it, all classes end up something like this. You get very little combat experience from quests, and they act more as account progression and side activities to complete for various achievements, and the main quest line in particular acts more as a tour around the world and a tutorial to the game to keep you moving from place to place. I highly recommend you follow the main quest religiously as it does teach you the majority of the mechanics. Now that I have just said that, I want to highlight something that the game does not do a very good job on. Whilst you're leveling up, alongside combat experience you also gain skill experience. These skill points do what they say on the tin, allow you to unlock new abilities and combos for your class within the skill panel. Default keybind is K. A rule of thumb in BDO is to just unlock everything. The order doesn't really matter outside of learning your new skills as soon as they become available. 90% of the damage for most classes come from one or two abilities. A good example is the class that I chose, the Lan, who doesn't gain her strongest ability until level 35, so until then I will indeed be hitting like a dog's chew toy. Do not worry if you feel underpowered whilst leveling, it probably just means you haven't got your cookie cutter attack yet. Additionally, in modern BDO, a brand new catch-up mechanic is introduced called seasonal characters that we spoke a little bit about earlier in the video. This basically fast tracks you through all the progression you need to get up to speed and on the right path to compete with players who have already sunk seven years into this game, so consider yourself lucky. Seasonal servers basically save you around 5,000 hours worth of grinding. This segment will be taking you through the basics of progression, content, and gameplay mechanics in more layman's terms because, let's be honest, sandbox games are very intimidating and BDO probably holds the title of most convoluted and systems heavy sandbox game in existence, which is why I love it so much. Seasonal servers are very much designed to streamline your process to getting competitive gear and I'll be explaining the whole point of seasonal servers to you now. First of all, seasonal specific channels provide an increase to experience gain and drop unique upgrade materials specific for seasonal gear. Only seasonal characters can enter a season channel, hence why we chose our main to be a seasonal character. You can create a new one every time a new season rolls around, which is roughly every three or four months. However, I want to bring your attention to the novice channel on the top, which is what I recommend you choose to play on. The only difference between a normal and novice season channel is that only brand new players are allowed on novice servers, so everyone you encounter on your journey will like likely be very new to the game, or people smurfing like me, but this won't matter until PvP becomes available to us much later down the line. Speaking of PvP, by default all PvP is disabled on a seasonal channel except for Channel 5, which allows for full PvP with no drawbacks. However, if you are brand new to the game, I do not recommend dabbling in PvP during your seasonal period, despite the increased loot you obtain from doing this. 
Now, let's move on to the Seasonal Rewards page. Clicking on the Season icon up here opens up your current progression through the season and rewards you with some pretty significant items as you progress. One of the most important items you'll obtain comes from your Level 10 Milestone, which gives you access to the typical Korean Level Up box. However, this box is special in BDO, and I highly recommend to not open it as you level up, as opening the actual box provides you with a huge huge attack buff and experience gain for 30 minutes. I would save opening this box until you get to around level 50, where you'll be grinding in a specific location for a significant amount of time. But if you are new and you are just looking to enjoy the game, and not min-max like a complete neckbeard loser, then do what you want with these boxes. The beauty of a sandbox MMO is to play the way you want, after all. As for the rest of the items in the seasonal reward page, you may have noticed a locked column here that offers you a lot of items available through the store. This is basically the equivalent of a seasonal subscription, and I do not recommend you worry about these rewards unless you truly think this game is worth your time, and even then, it's probably still not worth your money. BDO has a bad rep for a lot of pay-to-win items, however, I have never needed to pay-to-win to enjoy this game outside of the optional subscription, a buff called The Value Pack. As a new player, the game is pretty lean on handing out free pay-to-win items, so in the long run, it doesn't really play a big factor. For example, you're able to get a bunch of free pets, an outfit, over 20 days worth of optional subscription, and a lot of free inventory upgrades. But we'll be touching on BDO's pay-to-win in another video, as things are getting a little... Uh... So let's move on and talk about the actual progress and gameplay mechanics. So the game really starts to open up after you complete the first region and the game gives you your very first mount that you register and ride into the next zone. Quickly after completing quests in our second region, the game will begin handing you Naru gear. The first step towards gearing your character up and becoming the beast it'll be towards the end of the season. Completing the main story quest will eventually give you full Naru gear for free and an important component for powering this up called Beginner Blackstones. These are broken into two categories, weapon and armor, and basically act as baby's first enhancement mechanic. It's very simple, you right click on these stones, insert your Naru gear, and boom, it powers them up. The main story quest will absolutely shower you with these Beginner Blackstones, and that is why it's important for a new player to focus on the main story. You may find yourself spamming potions on cooldown just to stay alive, but this is completely normal, and also one of the reasons why Black Desert Online is so damn fun to play. You see, this game wants you to plow through huge groups of mobs, and in later levels when your gear starts to build up, you'll really start to get into the flow of its mechanics. This game is all about efficiency per hour, and learning ways how to be efficient is part of the learning curve. Generally, you want to run around in a rotation of mobs, blowing them up as quick as possible, utilizing the plethora of quick-paced movement and damaging abilities available to whatever class you've chosen. Levels mean very little in this game, it's all about gear, so do not fear mobs that are marked as red, in fact, that is the range you want to fight them at. Transitioning into the actual season server gear is as simple as maxing out your Naru equipment, and that is pretty much a free ride if you clear the main quest. The game really opens up at level 50, however I feel like we're getting out of the realms of a beginner now, so I think we'll end this guide with some other mechanics that makes BDO such a highly rated game for me. For starters, as I mentioned, this game is heavy on account bound progression. We spoke about the question marks earlier, and this is a major part of Black Desert Online's exploration mechanic as your account is governed by two main resources that are used to increase your overall efficiency or used to make some passive income. We'll tackle energy first as I have a soft spot for the life skills in this game. Exploring the world, meeting all the locals in one zone, unlocking the knowledge of mobs as you kill them, all things you'll be doing naturally increases your maximum energy pool. You can see the details of what you're missing by pressing H, the default keybind for the knowledge panel. Navigating this shows you pretty clearly what you're missing 
interesting and it's a very satisfying activity to fill out. Sometimes you need to spend energy to learn more additional niche knowledge, but energy's main use is for this game's gathering life skills that range from herbalism to mining. Each character has their own energy pool, so part of this game's appeal is to figure out how to effectively utilize your energy across your account. It regenerates at a rate of 1 energy per 3 minutes for your current online character and 1 energy per hour for all your offline characters. You can find all the information you need about life skills by pressing P and looking into the life skills panel. Your second account bound progression is a mechanic called contribution. This is essentially your account level, and you can only progress your contribution level by completing quests. Obviously, different quests offer varying degrees of contribution reward, and a common tactic for leveling this is to complete the daily quests available in big cities like Calpheon and Dregan. Contribution is used to manage your worker empire and create trade routes between cities. However, this is again getting out of the realms of a beginner guide. I'll finish up this video by discussing discussing why I think BDO is such an appealing MMO, especially for someone who's new to the game. There's so much depth and content to do in this game that I simply cannot talk about it in a single beginner's guide. The game boasts some of the best life skill mechanics across the whole multiverse, complemented by one of the healthiest economies out there due to how Pearl Abyss have designed the global marketplace. If you so wish, you could focus your whole time in this game doing nothing but life skills and make nearly as much money as your average grinder, who focuses on nothing but combat. But the appeal of this game comes not from that alone. It comes from how well the systems in this game complement each other. You never feel like you're wasting your time as you're always progressing towards something. If you're looking for an MMO to fill your time for, say, maybe the next year or so, then Black Desert Online doesn't get a higher recommendation from me. But as usual, I am just one nerd, and I genuinely want to invite you to join me on this new chapter on the channel, because I do think BDO does have some of the best sandbox mechanics currently available in the MMO genre. And hey, you might even get addicted yourself, just don't buy any of that pay to win stuff, you genuinely do not need it. But no, I hate BDO, it's garbage, pay to win, trash. And to that I say, if you don't like BDO, then why did you click on a video labelled New Player's Guide to BDO? I know my channel is about ashes of creation, kid, but if you think I can keep pumping out daily videos specifically about ashes, then you're high on copium.